Hello people, this is Nicholas from the Media Division and Panasonic just announced a full frame Cinecam with a 6K sensor and it is tiny and I happen to have one right here. So join us when I put this on a bench and show you around. As a Kubik fan, I just couldn't resist to use the iconic date 2021. Uh, and I hope that Kubik will forgive me. And you had some fun with that. If you're following what Panasonic does, you might have heard of the BGH-1. It is a box design camera with a micro third sensor. And now they did, you guessed it by the name, BS-1H, that this is just the same uh, design with the guts of the S1H. And as this name, BS1H, rolls of the tongue like Rumpelstiltskin, I'm just gonna call her B. And yes, I give my camps female names. I think it's quite a miracle that Panasonic was able to stick all the guts of the S1H inside the same tiny body that the BGH1 is in. It is actually the same form factor. This is one millimeter uh, deeper or something like that, but it's basically the same. But it has all the nice features of the S1H, including a full frame sensor. Let's go to the bench and have a look. As you can see, the camera is stripped of anything that's not necessary for operation. It doesn't have a viewfinder and not even an onboard LCD screen. B also misses the in-body stabilization so you will have to add what you need. This camera is really meant to go on a gimbal, a drone, a shoulder rig, a tripod, or in the tiniest corner of restricted shooting locations. Just like the S1H, the BS1H records the dual SD cards and has dual native ISO. What B has is connectivity for studio and live setups like Ethernet, SDI and timecode. B is actually a bit cheaper than the S1H and the US retail price will be $3,499. All that in a tiny box that weighs 585 grams. Not quite action cam territory, but darn close, and that with full frame. To give you an idea, this is the B next to the GH5, and while the GH5 is thinner in many parts, if you were to draw a box around it, the B would fit comfortably inside that box. And if you think that the Kinefinity Mavo LF is tiny, it looks massive next to the BS1H. Panasonic is a member of the L-mount consortium. That means the camera comes with an L-mount, which is unsurprisingly. Um, Panasonic and Sigma, who are both members of the L-mount consortium, have uh, lenses for the former. This is, for example, the 50 millimeter. But this is a, a servo lens, which means it has a very short focus throw. It no, has no hard stop. It's really not 
what makes the heart of a filmmaker sing. And as a fan of vintage lenses, um, for me, it's really important that you're able to adapt all this. And Sigma has adapters for EF and for, for PL and everything else which is important and has a longer flange. So this is not really an issue. Of course, the air mount has a little weak point and that is that you will never have a, a, a positive lock on the mount on the camera itself, which means you always have the tiniest wiggle. I don't expect it to be a big problem, but just be aware of it. B uses the same batteries as the EVO 1 uses, which makes an EVO 1 operator happy. Compared to the batteries used in the S1H, the larger batteries give you juice for many hours of shooting. B is actually so stripped down that it's not a question like if you're gonna rig it, the question is more uh, how are you gonna rig it. And I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of uh, things that I figured out in the short time I had the camera. The camera has mounting points on all sides, meaning that you can rig the camera without additional cages and cheese plates, if you want to. For example, you can just screw in some NATO rails for a quick handheld setup with follow focus or remote focus without a cage. The camera itself cannot power additional equipment, which is a bit sad considering that the camera relies on external equipment. Adding batteries to a larger monitor takes the center of weight off, so I would not recommend doing that. There are third-party batteries that offer longer life and higher draw than the Panasonic batteries, like these from SWIT. They also offer USB and barrel power supply for additional equipment. With this setup, you keep the weight where it should be and you have power for hours. Talking about runtimes, I yet have to use um, B in uh, real life situations, so I can't really tell you uh, something about runtimes, but um, as long as you just power the camera itself with a battery, it is just forever. Quite different than uh, cameras um, that are usually called cinecams, like for example, the Ari Alexa, the Ursa Mini, or the RED cameras. So if you're somebody who travels a lot, just be aware that uh, it's not only the camera size itself and the weight of the camera itself that really makes the music. Uh, it's the whole infrastructure. You have to carry batteries and stuff. It is so much easier to uh, uh, travel with something like B than it is with something like an Alexa Mini or uh, a Kinefinity Mavo LF. B is obviously not a camcorder and it wears the Lumix trademark, which means it is not designed by the broadcast unit of uh, Panasonic, like for example, the EVA 1 is, which I uh, have as well. Um, so uh, this is considered the prosumer and consumer brand, but I think like comparing this to EVA is almost unfair towards the EVA. Quite a bit of time is in between and the full frame sensor shows. Let's dive into the image quality that you can get out of this camera. It offers the exact same sensor, color science and video features of the S1H. You can record 422 color sampling in 10-bit up to DCI 4K with H.264 and full 6K open gate in 420 10-bit using HECV. Just refer to the official documents for details. The B offers full V-Log just like the EVA. It is standard and comes pre-installed. B can record 5.9K 12-bit RAW via HDMI either to ProRes RAW using the Atomos Ninja or to BRAW using a Blackmagic Video Assist. Strangely, only with a 16x9 crop, meaning that you can't record the full sensor's 3x2 open gate with higher end codecs or better color sampling at all. I hope this can be fixed with the future firmware. The camera has anamorphic modes that use a 4 perforation Super 35 4x3 crop. That allows pretty hot low weight setups like this one with a Leica R, an Isco Red and a Vasen Varidopter. Of course, you can use the full height of the sensor with internal recording, but de-squeezing and cropping has to be handled by the monitor. We will test that setup in Scope Chapter 3, the last part of our massive anamorphic journey. Check it out and subscribe if you want to see how this performs. Having had this camera for only a very short time, I didn't find the time to uh, find something that and shoot something that I would consider 
worth your time. So the only footage that I will actually show you is uh, some of the scenes in the 2001 spoof that we saw in the beginning. For example, the visor shots with the reflections that I did right here on my desk uh, are done with uh, the B. Um, but the B has exactly the same guts like the S1H and there's a lot of good footage on the web that you can watch. And the cool thing is about that is that there is experience about that camera and how you treat footage the right way and how you treat the camera the right way to get the best out of it. To give you a good example, let's watch some stuff that Bernard Bertrand shot. He's a mate of mine and he's a great photographer and a great guy and he has the eye, something Lynchian. This is just always like something special to watch his work with models. Awesome work as always. If you want to know how Bernard shoots the stuff, uh, you can go to his channel and please subscribe and show him some love. Bernard is also the admin, just like me, of the biggest S uh, Lumix um, closed Facebook group that is out there. And if you're interested in the camera, this is really the place to be. So let's put the puzzle together for who is the BS1H and for what? What the BS1H is not, it's not a hybrid camera. It isn't meant to shoot photos. While you can shoot photos in tethered mode, the B doesn't even offer photo modes when operated in a conservative way. If you want one cam that can do it all, the S1H is certainly the better choice. If you are planning to use the B for live production, be aware that the SDI is only 3G, so you are limited to full HD unless you use the HDMI out. The B can be rigged and stripped down in so many ways that it's very versatile and requires very little infrastructure, meaning that you can work with the small gimbal sliders motorized jib in confined spaces or as a high-end action cam. Everywhere where a full-scale Cinecam, like a Vericam, Alexa or Ursa Mini, is very limited due to size and weight. If you're a traveling filmmaker, your back will thank you. All that offering a full-frame sensor. That means very good adaptability for vintage lenses and excellent low light capabilities. Internally, you can only record to H.264 and H.265, just like with the SN up, the GH cameras and the EVA 1. Having an EVA 1 and a GH5 and having recorded every codec in the Arsenal and Clunic Pro-X RAW and ProS HQ, I had the opportunity to compare them thoroughly. In terms of IQ, there is no difference worth mentioning if you expose properly. I put a link in the description where I record split screen of ProRes HQ and H.265 and you can't tell which is which. Where the difference lies is in performance. While ProRes edits smooth on my Mac Pro even in 8K, to be fair I do have an afterburner card, Panasonic's flavors of H.264 are a bit cumbersome to work with. You can render quick proxies in any NLE without problems. I've been using Panasonic cameras on so many production in the past and uh, it gives me quite a good feeling uh, for products of Panasonic and for the attitude to have towards them. Uh, they're usually very reliable and I have no doubts that the S1H will be just the same. Uh, I have a personal history with Panasonic in the, in, in the sense that my first real camera was a DVX100. It was a mini DV camera that was able to shoot uh, progressive and it was the first of its kind. So that was very interesting. I continued with the GH lineup 
and uh, the GH4 really sparked my, uh, re-sparked my interest in filmmaking and caused me to become what I am today. So that is quite cool. I'm not married at all to Panasonic and I use other cameras. For example, the Kinefinity Marvel F, which is a very capable camera. But um, I think if you're traveling a lot and if you have a small budget, this is a very, very good option. So leave a comment what you think of B and um, I would like you to give us a like if you think that we deserve one. We have a lot of cool content here on the channel, which I call Adventures for Filmmakers. If you want to know in detail how we did the um, 2001 spoof in the beginning of this episode, I will post a, a little breakdown down the road on our Instagram page. I'll put a link in the description. And by the way, we have a lot of breakdowns on how we do uh, very cool things with very little uh, budget and very little means. And uh, you will see it's all about creativity and not so much about budget. If you like our content, why don't you just continue with watching one of our epic episodes? For example, F0.7. This is where we shoot with ultra-fast lenses just like Kubrick did in the candlelight scenes of Barry Lyndon. That's a wild experiment and we go into physics and we mod a camera to the extreme. That gotta be interesting. Until we see you again, my name is Nicholas, signing out with no delicious wishes. Shoot something amazing. Mm -hmm.